Hello, welcome to this tutorial on installing the Ham Radio Deluxe Remote Server option. And that allows us to control uh, pretty much any radio that is uh, configurable with Ham Radio Deluxe to be controlled over the internet uh, through a very nice interface and uh, works very well. So, uh, I will be interfacing with a TS2000 radio and uh, I am located in Massachusetts and the radio I am going to be configuring for is located in Rochester, New York. So uh, it's about 400 miles and we'll be connecting to that today. Uh, first off, you want to make sure that you have the latest Ham Radio Deluxe installation just, just to make sure that all the features are going to work correctly. Uh, I'm running version 2055 which is the beta version with the updated QRZ uh, patches. Uh, first off, as long as you have uh, the in the uh, Ham Radio Deluxe software installed, uh, you're pretty much good to go and start setting up the server. The only other software you're going to want is a Skype uh, account uh, for both yourself and the computer, the uh, host computer that you'll set up. Uh, I'm not going to go over those details, I'm just going to go over setting up the actual software for Ham Radio Deluxe and uh, we're going to be configuring whoops we're going to be configuring the uh, host computer the computer that's going to be staying with the radio uh, and wherever we travel we'll be re con remotely connecting to this computer and to the radio so first we're going to want to go up to tools here and make our way down to programs and we're gonna find the remote server configuration right here and we're gonna wanna click on that I have it started and installed uh, basically you're just going to click this button right here and inst install for the basic radio support if you want the keyer and rot rotator support uh, you can click that as well I'm not gonna be doing that today and if you uh, do install this and you get an access denied error, uh, simply just quit the program and right click and run as an administrator and uh, you'll be fine. That's what I had to do. Uh, I'm using Windows uh, 7 uh, release candidate and I had to do that, but uh, it wasn't much of a problem at all. Uh, click the install and uh, go through the installation. It's pretty quick and harmless. It's pretty much clicking an OK button. Uh, and then click the start here uh, and uh, then you're going to want to go into configure and uh, this guy right here is going to pop up I've already entered in uh, some information here and I'm just going to explain it so I'll separate up what uh, what we're going to be doing here so if you read through the if you read through the document you'll find uh, a bunch of helpful information about how to actually configure this. Uh, the uh, COM ports that we want to actually allow remote access to uh, are configured right here and I've set up COM ports 1 and COM ports 3 as the COM ports that I want to allow the remote server to allow access to. Uh, com my COM port 1 is controlling the radio frequency and uh, the actual um, features like that uh, and my COM port 3 is connected to a rig blaster and that's controlling push to talk and audio interfacing. Uh, I wouldn't recommend changing the port right here uh, make sure that if you have a firewall that you uh, allow Ham Radio Deluxe uh, remote server through that, that port um, that's really up to you if you want to change that and that's beyond the scope of, of this tutorial. Uh, down here is simply just allowing users to uh, uh, act, you know, allowing users to connect to the radio. Uh, really what it involves is just setting up an account and the password and uh, the, the options that you want to give them. Most people are going to want to use their call sign as an account. My call sign is KB1LQD, and uh, that's the actual username. 
we're going to type in a password. I've just, for demonstration purposes, typed in the word password. But uh, I would recommend, you know, a decent password with letters and numbers. And after that, you're going to find the options. If we go up here and read this area, we'll find the options that are allowed um, are allowed on each user profile. And uh, if you were to add more profiles, you'd simply just type in you know, user two and you know their other call signs. <clears throat> uh, what I have here is the options that uh, I want assigned to my own account. Uh, I've typed in restart, which will allow me to restart the Ham Radio Deluxe server software remotely. So if there's any changes or if there's an error, uh, if the program gets stuck for some reason, you should be able to restart it. Uh, give that option to only yourself, really. And the no transmit and no macros allows you to give someone who, say, isn't an amateur radio operator or you don't trust in transmitting but you want to let them listen and play around with the radio, uh, you can specify that they don't transmit and they don't send macros to get around transmitting uh, by sending their own commands. Okay, and if we come down to the bottom here, we'll see the welcome message. It's not very important, but if you want to give yourself or you and your friends uh, you know, a nice welcome message, um, you can just type it in right here. So, let me try to select this. Here we deluxe server. I'll just type in print server, and that's the screen that will pop up. Um, I'm not going to save this, but uh, pretty much we're done. Uh, we're done with the configuration. As long as you have set up the uh, firewall and uh, the uh, and you've correctly configured the radio to connect to this computer. So you're just going to go and save the file. I'm not. I'm going to use a different file for the actual connection here. And um, now I'm going to go and find my way to the uh, to the Skype software, and we're going to install that. And just coming back to the Ham Radio Deluxe software here, when you change the config configuration file, you're going to want to restart the service to put the new usernames and passwords and options into effect. You can do that by stopping and starting the service or you can use the remote option in the next screen to um, actually restart the service on its own. So we're just, we're just going to exit out of here and we're going to find our way to the Skype software right here and uh, what we want to make sure is that we have a few options set in the Skype software on the remote server to automatically accept the calls so that uh, you, we don't actually have to click the answer button when you actually when you call the host computer. Uh, I'm not going to go over in installing Skype. Uh, that's beyond beyond this tutorial. You can there's other tutorials that you can find for those for those uh, issues. So you're going to want to find your way to tools and options. Uh, go to calls and uh, you're going to want to change the allow calls from to only people in your contacts list. That way, uh, only, only you, if you're the only contact on the on the remote server uh, account's uh, contact list, it'll only allow you to contact it. Uh, so people going through the listings of uh, the Skype members can't just connect to it. Uh, that wouldn't be very good if you're transmitting or, or, or whatnot. Um, in, just in general, you don't want that happening especially in a setup like this. You're also going to want to select the answer incoming calls automatically just to make sure that uh, that when you call the the remote server that it automatically answers your your call. And uh, we'll actually see how that works um, later on. So just save that. And I brought up here the uh, remote server that I'm going to be connecting to. This is the uh, Rochester Institute of Technology Amateur Radio Club's uh, remote setup and I'm just gonna connect into that it's calling and it automatically answered the radio is not on that's why we hear nothing in the background and I'm just gonna mute my microphone for now and uh, I'll just unmute that later <clears throat> 